other layer equations so we remember that uh, we have the flow that is coming into a plate and the flow has a velocity u infinity and um, when it hits the plate it forms a boundary layer more or less this way so the fluid has also a temperature which is called T infinity and the boundary layer thickness it's um, delta and um, the plate it's uh, at a temperature Ts and x is measured from the tip of the plate and the total plate distance is L and the Y coordinate is the distance from the perpendicular from the plate so the velocity on the boundary layer it is going to be a function of X this distance this distance so it will depend on the point of interest it also depends on L the total length of the plate in this case V represents uh, U infinity the velocity of the fluid and the fluid will have some density and viscosity so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 parameters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 parameters sorry, 7 variables <coughs> And in the case of the shear stress, is going to we are going to have the same variables. We also have seven variables. In the case of the thermal boundary layer, um, we are going to have more parameters. So besides to the ones that we already mentioned, x, y, l, the velocity, the density, and the viscosity, we are going to have some thermal properties, as uh, Cp. The conductivity and the temperature of the plate and the temperature of the fluid so in total are going to be equal to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 variables so we have 11 variables and for the heat transfer convection coefficient is going to be the same Thing. Cp, K, Ts, T infinity, also 11 variables. So at the moment of doing or planning some experiments, we are going to have um, too many variables to account for. So in this case, it's very useful to have a di dimensionless um, way of uh, representing um, this uh, experiment. So I'm going to summarize what are going to be our variables. So x star will represent the dimensionless variable and is going to be defined as x divided by L, the total length. Y star, it is going to be y divided by L. The dimensionless velocity u star is u divided by the magnitude of v and <clears throat> v sorry the magnitude of yeah v we can normalize it that way and v it is going to be as v divided by the magnitude of v now the temperature we already defined uh, the start temperature dimensionless temperature and is t of y minus ts divided by t infinity minus ts and we can also define t star in terms of y star so that will be y star Well, t of y minus, uh, let me go back into that one. y is a function of 
y is a function of y star so we i don't have to write that explicitly and let, uh, let me keep it that way because that way was the was the point and uh, at the moment of doing some derivatives so we have the derivative of t star with respect to the total derivative with respect to y star it is going to be equal to the partial derivative of t star with respect to y multiplied by dy dy star and this is equal to so the t star the, uh, the derivative of the t star with respect to y it is the derivative of this term so we have this is a constant and this is a constant so the derivative is equal to 1 over t infinity minus ts multiplied by dt dy so this is the first term now dy dy star is the derivative of dy with respect to um, y star and that's equal, going to be equal to l so this multiplied by l so we can write the t star the y star multiplied by 1 over l is equal to 1 over t infinity minus ts dt dy and if i multiply by negative 1 i can swap these two terms so it will have minus dt star dy star multiplied by 1 over l is equal to 1 over ts minus t infinity dt dy and we will see the reason why i'm defining these variables because it's going to be useful uh, further ahead now the normalized equation so if we replace these variables into our original variables our original equations so we are going to have the following equations so u multiply well first of all we have two equations and the advection part which is these two equations are going to be basically replaced by the start version of the equations the pdx is replaced by the start version and the only constant that we have here is Reynolds L remember that Reynolds Reynolds L it is rho multiplied by the velocity multiplied by L so instead of saying x is L the, the length of the plate and divided by mu the second equation we have Reynolds L and we have Prandtl so the only two constants are Reynolds and Prandtl and Prandtl is Cp multiplied by mu and divided by k which is going to be equal to mu over alpha <clears throat> remember that alpha is the diffusivity so in our original equation for the definition of h we have that h multiplied by t at the surface minus t infinity equal to minus k of the fluid remember this conductivity is the conductivity of the fluid in the definition of h dt dy so h is equal to uh, minus kf divided by and I'm going to replace what I'm going to replace this new value that we have let me do it in in, in, in two steps so we have h equal to minus kf divided by ts minus t infinity multiplied by dt dy 
So this term let me highlight a different way. This term is this term. So that's equal to minus d t dy multiplied by 1 over L. And we have another negative term. So in conclusion, H is equal to Kf positive because the negative is cancelled with the negative that we have in the previous equation. K divided by L multiplied by dt star dy star. Otherwise, we can rearrange this definition and have H multiplied by L divided by K is equal to dt star dy star. And this guy is called the nozzle number, the nozzle number. Let me highlight it in red. Is the nozzle number which is a dimensionless form of the heat transfer convection coefficient dimensionless form of H this is our new dimensionless number now <clears throat> we already ha also have Prandtl, so we have Prandtl here. So let's talk about a little bit about Prandtl. So the Prandtl number is uh, named after Ludwig Prandtl, uh, who was a scientific engineer that worked with boundary layers. So most of the theory from boundary layers is due to Prandtl, and so this name, this number, is named um, after him. So Prandtl is viscosity divided by alpha, the thermal diffusion. So it is the ratio into the viscous diffusion rate and the thermal diffusion rate. So we can write it different, like Cp multiplied by mu divided by k, or either as kinematic viscosity divided by uh, the thermal diffusivity. So first of all, do these two are properties of the fluid. So Prandtl number is a fluid property. It doesn't depend of um, uh, the velocity or um, it's not like Reynolds uh, or nozzle number. It is a property of the fluid. So we, if we have water, it will be different as we, if we have oil. For gases, Prandtl is approximately equal to one. That's an interesting factor. For liquid metal, Prandtl is less than one. So when you are in melting metal, Prandtl is less than one. For oils, Prandtl is um, bigger than one, much bigger than one. Uh, so interestingly, for laminar boundary layers, delta, which is the bond, uh, velocity boundary layer divided by the thermal boundary layer is approximately equal to Prandtl to the n, where n is a factor, an integer factor in general. And for a gas, delta, it is approximately equal to delta t. So the boundary layer for the uh, liquid is approximately equal to the boundary layer, um, the thermal boundary layer. So that's really uh, Simplifies a lot for uh, gas for a gas. Now, one interesting thing uh, of the dimensionless analysis is the Reynolds analogy. So, the Reynolds analogy is particularly useful when we have negligible pressure gradient and Prandtl approximately equal to one. So if this guy, it is approximately equal to zero, let me highlight it here. When this one is approximately equal to zero and Prandtl is approximately equal to one, let me go back to this equation, Prandtl equal to one. So for the temperature equation, 
the term becomes really the same. The only difference is this is the second derivative of the velocity and this is the second derivative of the temperature in dimensionless form. So these two equations are the same equation. So we can use those relationships. So for equivalent boundary condition, so we need to find the equivalent boundary conditions. The solutions are of the same form. So we are saying that u star is equal to t star and <clears throat> also the u dy star at y equal to zero is equal to the t dy star at y equal to zero. So by analogy, analogy what we have is that the uh, friction coefficient multiplied by the Reynolds divided by 2 is equal to nozzle. So we, if we compare um, the coefficients, we are going to end up with this relationship. Also, we can, if we define the state on number, as nozzle divided by Reynolds divided by Crandall and this guy is in, in reality a modified nozzle number see we have the nozzle number on the numerator <clears throat> but in the case of Crandall equal to 1, so the state on number is equal to nozzle divided by Reynolds. And therefore, if we use this analogy, so we are going to have that the friction coefficient divided by 2 is equal to the state on number. So that means that if we do fluid experiments and we are able to measure uh, Reynolds numbers on the friction coefficient, so the friction coefficient is going to be related to the staton number and the staton number, it is neutral over Reynolds. We know the Reynolds, so we can work out the nozzle and with the nozzle, we can work out H. So that means that we can do experiments in the fluid mechanics and get information about the heat transfer. But those, those are for very particular situation. When the pressure gradient is negligible and Prandtl is approximately equal to one. So this means that we are working with a gas, okay? And so that's the way as many of um, those uh, coefficients are formed. Okay, I will stop this um, dimensionless part at this point. Thank you.